So here's a question uh, I have for you. Now, given that, uh, so now let's just uh, take a look at the stability region of the three schemes. And uh, I'll give you two equations, and I'll ask you which one is easier to solve. All right. So equation one, I have d dt of x1, x2, x100. All right. I have a hundred systems. And uh, uh, it's equal to a matrix um, of, let's say I, I get a tridiagonal, I, I get a I get a tridiagonal system. I have one, 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 one on the diagonal. Let's say minus one, right? Because I want it to be stable. And a minus one here and minus one here. And I have x1, x100. Uh, do we all understand what this means? Uh, I just have minus one everywhere on the three diagonals and zero everywhere else. Okay? This is one system. The second system is it's a system only involving two ODs, x1 and x2. And the equation is such that it's minus a million and one plus a million with no ones um, plus a million with no ones and minus a million and one x1 x2 so one system is like the top one system is down here which one do you think is easier to solve numerically the bottom is easier is easier to solve why is that uh, because the because you have a million, it doesn't change what your eigenvalues are, but it's you, so you only have two equations as opposed to 100 equations. Yeah, right. So, so this one, I only have two equations as opposed to 100 equations. So the argument is this is easier to solve. And does everybody agree? Yes? But because the first one has mostly zeros, uh -huh. doesn't that reduce the complexity? Because it's literally repeating the same. Right. Over and over again. Now the first one has a lot of zeros. That in in uh, linear algebra terminology, that means it's a sparse matrix, right? Or or this is a sparse ODE system, right? So that does that make it easier to solve? Most likely, yes, because the computation is less, right? Okay. Any other opinions on what makes one easier to solve than another? Does it uh, have to do with the coupling between them, right? So, so what do you observe about the coupling? Uh, the bottom one has less, has more coupling than the. So, for example, the top x one and x one hundred are decoupled. Yeah, right. So, so the the second one, uh, the two equations are coupled, while the first one only the nearby values are coupled, right? Okay. Anything else relating to the uh, eigenvalues and stability we just uh, started? Oh. You have um, more eigenvalues, you're more likely to be outside the stability region. Yeah, which one has more eigenvalues? The top. The top one has more eigenvalues, right? So maybe it's more likely to be outside the stability region. Yeah. But? What I'm thinking of, if we did it as a first thing, the eigenvalues are going to be the same. Like, it's going to be repeated, but not different values. Okay. Why don't we compute these eigenvalues? All right. Yeah, I was going to say the first matrix has, like, Because we can divide them into smaller sub matrices. They would have similar eigenvalues. The first one would have similar eigenvalues? Is that what you are saying? What did you want to oh, say? I was going to say the first one, there's a really quick identity to find the eigenvalues, but I don't right off the end. Uh, the don't. second one might be might have less conveniently placed eigenvalues. So let's let's actually compute it. So A1 is equal to what? Uh, are you all familiar with uh, this I? 
yeah. so that gives me a, a identity of um, if I double click on this one gives me a identity matrix right mm, yeah. oh actually I need to reverse the sign of that but like uh, who knows actually I can also do this minus diag of once 99 one one does anybody know what that does it, it takes a vector with 99 ones and put it on the diagonal shifted by one so let's do that you, you get feel a bunch of minus ones on the upper diagonal so how do I feel the lower diagonals yeah I just uh, change this one to negative one okay I feel the lower diagonals all right so I go of a1 uh, I get let's actually plot it as circles yeah I get the uh, uh, Set up or something. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So I think that's not. We get a bunch of. Oh, yeah. That's uh. That's different from what I wanted to say. Okay. So yeah. So you get a bunch of eigenvalues. Uh, actually, that's uh. The system is actually different from uh what I wanted to get um, let's see so how, how about we make this minus 3 so uh, because th this one actually is gonna be unstable because I have some eigenvalues positive right so that's uh, that's not what I want let me increase the diagonal entries to minus 3 to get it uh, uh, so the the analytical system would be unstable Okay. Because uh, because I have a bunch of eigenvalues that are positive, right? Positive means du dt equal to positive lambda times u is going to grow indefinitely, right? So that's that's not what I wanted. So so uh, the point is I want to make it a, a sparsely coupled system with all negative eigenvalues. Uh, so to fix that, let's do minus two times i of one hundred, right? So I make the diagonal to be minus three. And now, if I plot it, uh, I get okay. So, so eigenvalue distribution from minus five to one. All right. Okay. How about the second one? My a two is going to be minus what? A million one. A million. Did I put one more? Yeah, I had one more zero here. Okay. We have oh. plus on this. Oh, okay. Uh, this. So this is my A2. Mm -hmm. All right. I go of A2 is equal to, uh, let's do format long. I go of A2 is going to be, uh, the first one I think is actually, yeah, the first one is minus 2 million. The second one is minus one. one. So, what do you think? Probably the, the first one is going to be easier to deal with because I haven't seen anything that had a great region of convergence with uh, negative two million. Okay, so you're saying probably the first one is easier to deal with because the second one has a really negative eigenvalue. Yes. Right. Okay. What did I you think say? The first one's easier because we can use virtual identities to put them inside the stability region that we're trying to move it minus two million. Right. So you're saying the first one is easier because we can afford to use a bigger delta t. Remember, as soon as long as we make delta t small enough, we can ultimately have lambda times delta t to be inside the stability region of forward order even right but then we have to have a delta t that is what that is less than yeah, less than a million less than a millionth right yeah for this to work okay 